Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how difficult computer science is. Now, if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll know that I'm 18 and I'm just about finished my first year of computer science. So I actually live in Canada and I'm going to a university in Ontario where I'm majoring in computer science. And I believe my exact program is honors computer science co-op and then I'm actually in the entrepreneur and business stream which means that I take uh, one or two business electives each year and then when I graduate I get that extra little tag on my diploma saying that I like did entrepreneurship so that's the exact program that I'm in what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna start by just explaining a bit about computer science in general what it really is what you're taking in university and then I'm gonna go through my first year courses, uh, I'm going to show you guys the averages for those classes, my average for those classes, and kind of explain why maybe some courses are more difficult than others or which ones are more difficult. So you guys get an exact idea of what it's like rather than me just saying, no, it's not hard or yes, it's hard. Okay. So if you guys want to see exactly how I did in all my computer science classes, make sure you stick tuned to the end of the video. Um, I feel like some of you guys might be interested in that. So anyways. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just talk in general about what is computer science? A lot of people don't actually really know what computer science is before taking it and going into university. Now, essentially what it is, is it's not being a programmer. A lot of people think computer science is just writing tons of lines of code and just being really good at coding. Yes, obviously that's an aspect to it, but it's really focused around efficiency, algorithms, design, the ways that computer work, um, and knowing these things allows you to write much better code. So at the end of the day, yes, it comes down to writing really good code for your assignments and your projects and having good flowing programs, but it's also really about the way that you approach problems, the way that you think about things, designing algorithms. Um, and if you graduate with a computer science degree, that means you can take those skills to any different kind of programming language. It's not just like, oh, you're really good at Java programming. Yeah, you might be, but if you have the computer science fundamentals, like you know a lot about algorithms or you know how to approach a problem, or maybe you're good at machine learning, then you can do that in any language. And all that's gonna differ is the syntax and the words in that language that you're using. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my different courses. I have to take five courses per semester. I'm in my second semester right now. So let's start with first semester, go through which courses I took and the averages and how I did in those classes. So the first course I had to take was Calculus 1. Now, Calculus 1, uh, I'd have to look at my transcript here because I always forget and I'll pop it up on the screen. I got an A in Calculus 1, which translates to a 9.0 out of 10.0 on a GPA scale. You guys can convert that to like a 4.0 scale if that's what you use. The class average for that was a 5.43 GPA, which is sitting around 60 to 65%. So you can tell that most people that took that, that actually finished the class, because this is not account for the people that dropped out of it, um, didn't do amazing and a lot of people found it difficult. Now, I would say Calculus 1 is probably one of the hardest first year classes and that is just because it's just difficult a lot of the math that you have to do you're dealing with uh integrals at least that's what i'm doing you might might be different curriculum in whatever school you're going to and it's kind of a big step up and it requires a lot of practice if you are not constantly practicing and doing your homework you are not going to do well in that class and i think a lot of people are used to high school like i was where you just go in, I don't know, maybe you did a few practice questions before the test or whatever, and you're just fine. This, if you haven't been practicing like every after each lecture, you're probably not going to do well. And I think that's why a lot of people found it very difficult because it just requires a lot of practice. Okay, so the next class I had to take was Introduction to Linear Algebra. Now, this just sounds intimidating. When you hear linear algebra, you're kind of like, okay, wow, like what is linear algebra is a difficult class but it is not um, like crazy difficult. So I finished that finished that class with an A minus, which is like, I think it's like 80 to 85%. And the class average for that was 5.16 GPA out of 10, which again equates to about a 60%. So a lot of people found that class very difficult. And in fact, I think actually like 35% of my class dropped out for making it to the exam because they didn't want that like F or the fail on their transcript and they already did horribly on the midterms. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so anyways, a lot of people find that class difficult because it deals with really abstract concepts. 
the actual math that you perform is not hard by any means. In fact, I'd say that if you know like grade nine or 10 math, you're able to complete almost any like math equation or anything that it needs you to do in that class. Um, it's just a really abstract concept and you're dealing with matrices and multiple dimensions. And a lot of people get caught up in the fact that you can't really visualize what you're doing. For example, if you're dealing with a 12 dimensional matrix, you can't like you can't visualize what that looks like. You're used to three dimensional math with up to three variables, X, Y, Z. And now you're dealing with like 10, 15, 20 infinite amount of dimensions. And a lot of people just get really confused and let that kind of, I don't know, distract them from how to do the math. So the next class I was in was introduction to computing one. This class is an absolute joke. If you've done anything with computer science. Like, I mean, like you've just written any kind of Python, you've written any code, like you could consider yourself a beginner you will be far ahead in this class. They have to teach you like introduction class. They have to do like an introduction programming class then make it mandatory because they have to make assume that everyone knows nothing about programming going into university because a lot of high schools don't offer programming. So they kind of teach it like from the very beginning, <laughs> um, which means if you've done anything with that, you, you'll be fine. So you guys already imagine I got an A plus in that class. I pretty well teach this class on my YouTube channel and it was just, it's just an absolute joke. So if you have done anything with programming, don't worry about your first year computing classes. They're going to be a breeze. Okay. Next class that I was in was engineering economics and technical report writing. Now these two, so technical report writing, it was required because I'm in the faculty of engineering. So I have to take that class. That class is super easy as well. It's just like really basic grammar and how to structure reports and do documents. I hate the class, it's boring, I hate writing, but I got an A in it, it's really easy. Um, class average for that was 7.41. Like that's a high class average for university. Um, so that means most people got like a 75. Uh, okay, next one, engineering economics. I got an A plus in this. This is a re elective class. I chose to take this. Likely you won't have to take any class like that. You'll get to pick. I don't know, enjoyed that class and just taught a bit about business. So I haven't yet finished these classes obviously, but I kind of have an idea of their difficulty level. So let's start by talking about Introduction to Computing 2. So Introduction to Computing 2 is a massive step up from Introduction to Computing 1 and it is taught in Java. So the other one I think I mentioned was taught in Python. This one is taught in Java. So being taught in Java, it means already the language is a bit more difficult to use and they don't actually teach any of the syntax. They just tell you like, we're gonna continue learning about computer science concepts with the language Java, not like we're teaching you Java. It's just we're using Java to teach you concepts, if that makes sense to you guys. So I, what we've done in this class so far, and I haven't found it very difficult, I got 96 on the midterm that I wrote a few days ago, is like polymorphism, uh, inheritance, what do you call it? Uh, interfaces, that's the word, I okay, interfaces, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. And then they have stuff like, what are you doing, like stacks, queues, uh, just really like basic stuff. We dealt with generics, I don't know if you guys know what that is, uh, but nothing crazy difficult. And that, by the end of the year, we're doing some like graphical user interface stuff. Uh, we're doing a few other like different kind of algorithms, binary search trees, just really fundamental computer science concepts that aren't crazy difficult, but you know, you do kind of have to practice them a little bit. So that computing two class, is a step up obviously from computing one, but by no means would I say it's very difficult. And you know, if you're into programming, it's almost like you kind of just enjoy doing it. Like I genuinely enjoy doing a lot of the work for that class. And I, it, that being said, I don't really consider it work, right? Okay, so next class I have to take and you will likely have to take as well is discrete math for computing. This class is difficult. Um, I'm doing okay in this class right now, but it is, it's just very weird. It's nothing like you've ever done before. It deals with set theory. It deals with proving um, like formulas, proving like you just do proofs. Like you have to prove that something equals something, which seems like, I don't know, it just, it's just difficult. And then you're doing like truth tables and basic logics so like and or not, but kind of with some weird like more difficult than I'm just explaining right there. So that class is difficult. I can't tell you obviously what the class average is because I'm not finished it yet, um, but I assume it'll be fairly low. Next class, digital systems. This class is actually super interesting and it deals with really low level logic on how a computer actually works. And it deals with like AND gates, NOR gates, NANDs, um, latches, memory. Uh, if you guys know what any of that means, 
then you know what it means. But anyways, it just deals with like really low level logic, which is really interesting and kind of gives you a different perspective on how computers work. Uh, it is a bit of a difficult class, but it's not it's not that hard. If you practice and you actually read um, like a lot of the notes and whatnot, take notes, go to class, it's not uh, nothing too crazy. And finally, the two other classes that I'm doing this semester are, I actually have to look because why do I forget what ones I'm doing? That's probably not good. Calculus 2. Yeah, so Calculus 2 is I would actually argue easier than Calculus 1. You do need Calculus 1 to be able to do Calculus 2. I mean, it makes sense, 1, 2. But the concepts are just simpler, I would say. And if you do the practice, really calculus and math like that is just practice, practice, practice. It's not difficult at all. And you can definitely get, you could easily get 100 in that class if you just continually did the practice. But that being said, I mean, most people don't do that. So a lot of people do struggle with that. Next one I'm in is... I have to look on here again. Oh, introduction to business management. So again, I noted I'm in this entrepreneurship stream, so I have to take some business electives. This class, I mean, it's not really, you guys probably aren't gonna have to take it. It's pretty interesting. It just kind of talks about, you know, uh, what do you call it, management? what I say? Did I say business management? Yeah. Okay. So it talks about management and just how to be a good manager and different aspects to look at in business. And, you know, kind of from like an engineering, like science perspective side to go into a class like that is interesting and just kind of hear some different perspectives and see different ways that other people think. Um, because I think very logically and linear as opposed to like creatively and out of the box, um, which can be an advantage or a disadvantage. So it's nice to kind of get some different perspective and take a different kind of class. So anyways, that has kind of been it about computer science. I apologize for this video being so long, but I wanted to give you guys a really good in-depth kind of look at to what you're going to have to take a little summary about each of them, not too much, but not too little, how the class does an average on those, how I do in my opinion on it. So just to wrap up here, computer science, if you guys are into computer science and you actually like what you're doing, first year, it might sound difficult, it might sound intimidating, but what they try to do is they try to actually flush out all the students that can't handle it in first year. Personally, in my program, the reason why there's so many required math classes in first year is because once you get to second year, third year, fourth year, they want to make sure the students that are there are serious about the degree that they're taking. And a lot of people jump into computer science without any programming knowledge, without any idea of really what it is. And when they get into first year, they see all these hard courses and they just kind of jump ship or they change uh, programs. And I know actually a lot of people that have done that or that are thinking about doing that. So they give you all these hard math classes to kind of flush out the people that, you know, don't really know what they're doing or don't want to be there. And then in the next years, everything gets a lot better because you just get so much more freedom and selection in what you get to choose. And I don't know, personally, I'm really excited about future years where I get to pick pretty well all the classes I get to take and everything I'm taking is just genuinely interesting to me. So I don't know, that's kind of been a bit about uh, computer science and how difficult it is. I would say it's one of the more difficult degrees. That being said, if you guys are into it and you like it, definitely pursue it. Don't be intimidated by some of the math and some of the other things. If you work hard enough and you actually just do the practice, that's all it comes down to, you will succeed and you will do well. And that's the biggest thing I see in school in general. Honestly, I know it's what everyone says, but if you put the work in, you will see the results. Anyways, guys, that's been it for me. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this and your opinion on computer science, difficulty, all that uh, in the comments below. So uh, let me know.